All right, George, we are live. Thank you so much for taking out some time. My pleasure. Very cool. Um, you know, tell us what it was like voicing all these characters in Pee Wee's Playhouse. You voiced Countess, you voiced Globy, Flower, Terry in season two. Yeah. Don't forget. The fish? The fish. Um, <laughs> it was super fun. I mean, I, I, most of the other puppet voices were actual puppeteers. Okay. So luckily they knew what they were doing. I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants. Um, you know, Globy was a remote control thing to make him spin, make his eyes move, and make his mouth move. And he was often, you know, slightly off electronically. <laughs> so his movements are not like fantastic. <laughs> but, so I would stand there and do Globy. The fish, I would stand behind the fish tank with my hand on each of the fishes. You know, they each had their own hands and I would just sort of bounce them around and I would do both the voices. And Countess, the first season, it was kind of a little bit of a nightmare because the, suit, the, the place we shot in New York was so hot. It was, it, it was always just like super hot, super hot. And I had to get, actually get into that gigantic cow head and um really yeah so i would be inside the cab the first season when we moved to la a fantastic puppeteer van snowden who was also hr pup and stuff and um, a bunch of different like famous tv puppets he went inside the suit and i stood next to him with the microphone so that was a lot better but the cow had um you know, little sticks for the eyes, which I could easily do, but then the mouth was like this really hard plastic, so to make the mouth move was like pushing my athletic ability. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> move it. Um, and then when I did Terry the second season, again, Ben Snowden did the puppeteering, and I stood off to the side, because it was all strings and, you know, up from above. Um, yeah, and the flowers, I would just sit behind the flower box, and it was the easiest one. Thank you. You know, it was just, <laughs> but it was fun to do it and it was fun to you know just be on the set it was just a, it was a, a very fun the two years that i was actually on the set were very fun after the after the second season i got my own tv show on nick at night so i couldn't be on the set anymore but i would go in and i would loop all my puppet voices after they had already filmed it that's cool what show was that on nick at night it was called On the Television. Okay. It was, it was a sketch comedy show. Was, the premise was a fake Cisco and Eber reviewing fake TV shows. So it was spoofs of real TV shows, possible TV shows, all kinds of stuff like that. They did like 40 episodes of it. That's brilliant. That's yeah. really cool. So, I was going to ask if you actually did the puppeteering work as well for, for Pee Wee, but you say that you I did. I did for the flowers. I did for the fish. And I did for Globy. That's cool. And, and, and then the first season I did for the count, Countess, but after that I didn't. That's cool. So why did you only voice Terry in season two? How did that work out? Um, it's kind of an icky situation that um, Paul and John Paragon, who really was Terry, uh, had known each other for years and had sort of a tumultuous relationship. Um, you know, they just snap at each other and then one wouldn't talk to the other. And it was just like very fiery kind of relationship. Yeah. Based on their personalities and whatever. And I don't remember what it was that John did, but he did something and P was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was actually completely awkward because that season, John filmed all his zombie stuff kind of in isolation. Really? Paul, Paul didn't want to see him and be on the set with him. And so John would be in the box just <laughs> doing all his zombie line. It was, it was very, very weird. And it was completely weird for me because I, I didn't know Paul before Pee Wee's Playhouse, but I did know John. So it put me in a really awkward position that, you know, John understood and, you know, I was like, well, what am I going to do? You know, so. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, um, how is it also getting to play um, uh, Zizzy? 
It was Zizi Baluba. It was crazy. You know, I had to have a makeup artist in one of those casts over my face to make the the costume. So that was weird. Um, a guy named Greg Cannon, super. He, he went on to win Academy Awards for I, I don't remember what, but something. A really great makeup artist, and it was fun to do. Interesting thing about Zizi Baluba, when I was doing it on the set. I talk like this. And then after it was all recorded, Paul said, no, I don't like that anymore. I want you to go back and make it mean. So I went into the booth and dubbed all of my dialogue talking like this. So it was uh, a double performance. <laughs> How long did the makeup take? It took a couple of, uh, it took a day to do, to create the head, you know, because it was all, everything was all sort of plastic except my eyes and uh, my mouth. Um, so everything was applied. To actually do it, it probably took like a couple of hours. Wow. Uh, but the, the actual doing of the mask and all that, that took a few hours. Holy cow, that's great. And, uh, and did you perform any other characters as well besides the ones that that we discussed or? In the first season I did a, a live thing as the, uh, he calls this woman, says, is your refrigerator running? And then the woman says, my husband's a policeman. And then she calls me in and I come in and I scare him. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. so that was me. And Alison Moore was the woman when she played Cherry, Magic Screen, sure. uh, Chick Chicky Baby, um, yeah. That's cool, man, I love it. What would you say was your favorite character to work with? You mean of the puppets I played? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm most remembered for Globy. That's what people will, if they know that I was on PB's Playhouse and I was Globy, they'll say, spin me, it's over there. And so people <laughs> seem to, to remember Globy the most. Um, I liked playing the Countess. I just, it was just a fun voice to do. And, uh, you know, she, when she was in the show, she had some funny things to say. I liked it. That's cool. That's a good one. And what was it like to write the theme song for the show? That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, the, I'll tell you the story. Uh, we were in New York. Maybe we were on episode three or something like of the 10 or 13 we did. And Paul took me in his dressing room one day and he said, we need to write a theme song. Do you want to write it? I said, yeah, sure. Um, and he, I had done a lot of song improv at the Groundlings that he knew about. So he, he knew I had made up songs, you know, and, and he said, do you want to write it? And I said, yeah, what do you want it to be? And he stood up and he went, come on in and pull yourself up a chair like Cherry. And he said he wanted it to be like a Betty Boop. Kind of a thing. Yeah. So I went to my hotel and do you want to see? I actually have, hang on one second, I'm going to show you something that you will go, what? Sweet. Um, I, I, I went to my hotel room and I wrote the theme song. I wrote the lyrics and then I Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if I can locate it, but it's on my Facebook somewhere. Anyway, so I wrote it out on Liga Pad, and um, the next day I went back in and I sang it to Paul. Maybe it was over a weekend, and sang it to him. We probably changed a couple of words here and there, but he want he he also wanted to have all of the puppets named. He wanted to have everything, dinosaur family, you know, everybody's doing something. Um, so I did, and we sang it into a tape recorder and uh, sent it off to Mark Mothersbaugh, who sent it back pretty much the same tune and everything, and, and he had orchestrated it and put and made it. And then we went to CBS Recording Studios on 57th Street, New York, and Cindy Lauper, he had asked to do to sing it, and really? so 
at that time, Cindy Lauper was trying to transition from Girls Just Want to Have Fun to the time after time, Cindy Lauper. Yeah. And she wanted to be taken seriously as a singer. So she brought her friend, Ellen Foley, who got the credit on the show, sung by Ellen Foley, but Ellen Foley sang it. And she was, you know, she was fine, but she wasn't Cindy Lauper. And Paul twisted her arm, got her to, to record it, and Cindy Lauper recorded it with the proviso that we don't say it's Cindy Lauper in the credits. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that's what happened. That's why it says Ellen Shaw. She was a real person, Ellen Shaw, but she didn't record it. She did record it, but then it was replaced by the Cindy Lauper version. So that was super fun because I was kind of a fan of Cindy Lauper's too. You know? Who isn't? I got to meet her once. She's really nice. Yeah, she was, she was super nice. Um, you know, that was one of the fun things about Peavy's Playhouse, like the Christmas special, all these stars, you know, that you never think you're ever going to meet in your life worked on that show. So that was fun. And what was it like writing for this show? Because you also the writer. Uh, I, I, I wrote the first two seasons. The first season, um, Paul had come to the Groundlings, and the Groundlings is sketch comedy. So he came backstage afterwards and said, who wrote this, who wrote this, who wrote this? And I had written the things that he liked and introduced him. Hello, I'm Paul Rubens. And uh, a week later, I get a phone call from Paul saying, uh, do you want to write a kid show with me? I had written a show called Kids Incorporated. Yeah. I, had, I had written like maybe seven to 10 episodes of that show. So it wasn't the first thing I'd ever written, but I was like, sure. You know, I, I was basically trying to be an actor. You know, I, I wasn't really trying to be a writer. The Kids Incorporated thing just fell into my lap and I did it. But uh, he said, you want a TV show, a kids show with me? And I said, sure. And so we would meet at an office in Hollywood or at his house, five of us, and we would, um, He'd have a lot of, you know, meetings where he had to approve puppets and this and that and all kinds, because the production company was in New York when we were in LA, so it was a constant faxing of things back and forth and that kind of stuff. And we wrote the first 13 episodes. Wow. After the first season, uh, it was just Paul and I who wrote them, the second season. And a guy named Max, Max Robert, who was one of the original five writers, lived in San Francisco. He was ill. So he would come down every once in a while and, you know, put his two cents in. But basically, Paul and I sat across from a desk and wrote the whole second season while we were writing Big Top Pee Wee. So at, at the first season, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know if Paul before him, but we really clicked. You know, we just... You know, he liked me, I liked him. We had fun working together. So after the first season of Beavis Playhouse, he and I just, he asked me to write the movie with him. And then we did the series, the 10 episodes of season two together. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. And um, what was it like being on the set? I mean, it must have been, you know, this this crazy, you know, be created. To totally different from New York to LA because, like I said, New York we were cramped in a in a building that was mostly like sweatshops. The elevator doors would open on the floor beneath us, and it was you know with hundreds of women sitting at sewing machines. And then the elevator would go up to our thing, and there was the set of Beavis Playhouse. It was it was much smaller. It was much hotter. Um, it was it was more uh, kamikaze you know, sort of filming, and uh, a first-time director, Stephen Johnson, who had done a couple of really popular music videos, and, you know, a very large cast, not as many cast members in the second season forward. Um, and then Los Angeles, there was uh, Hollywood Center Studios, it was much nicer, bigger, you know, you could fit all the cameras and the people in it. It wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, running around trying to do it. It was much more typical TV set kind of a thing. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And what was it like working with, with Paul? Like you said, did he ever break character while he was on set? Was he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
he totally broke character when he was on set because he, you know, he was the boss, you know, and his, uh, I'm, uh, if I seem distracted, it's because I'm looking for this other thing at the same time so I can show you. But uh, Paul, you know, Paul's a very different person than Pee Wee Herman. He's a very serious and, um, you know, he's funny, but he's, he's, He's a perfectionist. He's very serious about, uh, I found it. Um, you know, what he wants, he, he, he's, he's um, I think I would say a total perfectionist. Uh, the example I always say is um, he would go on the set and you know how many things there were on that set he would notice if a pencil had been moved out of the pencil box or something wasn't right. He was, wow. he was really in charge of the detail. He was very into the detail of everything. This is the perfect example of this is, like I said, we did the first season in New York and he had issues with certain things. Um, one of them being Galobi. He didn't, he wasn't satisfied with the Globy puppet. And after we moved to California, we, he had a different production company doing it. And he took the original Globy and he used to have eyes, like big eyes, sort of like mine, big blue eyes. And he had a little button nose and Paul went and he took the clay and he squinched a nose that was all crooked and the eyes turned into beady little eyes. Everything he didn't like. The first episode of the second season is, let's redecorate the playhouse. And what that really meant was, we are getting rid of everything I didn't like and we're replacing <laughs> it with something I like. And there were some new puppets were put in, Flory was put in, Clocky was put in. Um, and everything that he didn't like was changed. And he was that kind of a person that he cared about the size of Bobby's nose. You know what I mean? It was like, um, he's just, he's a perfectionist. I mean, he is a, I want to say he's a genius, but I don't mean it in the typical sort of, oh, that guy's a genius. I don't mean it like that. I mean, he really does have a, he knows what he wants to do and he's going to do it. it it's, going to, it's going to go down the way he wants it to go down and that's how, how he did things. Um, I am just going to, let's see, give me one second. Okay. I'm going to share my screen with you. Oh, oh the host is, you, can you make me co-host and then I can share this with you. Okay. All right. That's it. Wow. That's the original piece of paper that I wrote, theme song, and apparently hundreds and hundreds of phone numbers. <laughs> There's a copy ring, and you know it's it's exactly what I wrote it on. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. That it's is a beautiful. It's, oh, you want it back? No, no, no. It's fine. That was incredible. Yeah, a little a little Pee Wee Abelia. Wow, man, that's really cool. I'm glad you found that. Yeah. So you mentioned you also wrote Big Top Pee Wee. How was that working on the film and how did it differ from the series? Well, it was just Paul and I at an office of Paramount. And I mean, it was, it was very different because the playhouse was, what about this? Yeah, that's a good episode. What about this? You know, you just sort of, you can write anything you want. And this was trying to tell a story. And again, Paul had some very specific things that he wanted to be in that story. He wanted to have the longest dream kiss that ever was. And he did. You know, whether that was a good idea, hmm. 
but it was it was like one of the things that he wanted to do. So we watched a lot of circus movies together, like Jumbo and Greatest Show on Earth, and uh, to get some circus ideas. Paul came from Sarasota, Florida, so he had some real life familiarity with the circus because I guess that's where they spend their summers or their winters, or I'm not sure what, but there's like a circus part of Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. So he had some familiarity with it. I didn't, you know. Um, and then we just put the whole thing on uh, index cards. We pitched it to the head of Paramount, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, go, go, go." And so that <laughs> then we wrote it. How fun is that? Wow. And um, I guess what have you been doing now since the show? Give us some background on what you're working on now. Um, I'm teaching right now. I That's teach. Cool. Uh, voiceover acting sketch comedy writing uh tv pilot writing um improv um i've been teaching for almost 10 years now um after peewee's playhouse like i said i had my own show for a while for for a couple of years and then i did uh i wrote a tv movie called based on an untrue story that had uh morgan fairchild van cannon um harvey corman uh, just sort of a, an airplane of TV movies is how I would describe it. And then I, I've done many uh, creative consultants, executive consultant jobs on a lot of different sitcoms, you know, I go in for a day or pilots. And then I worked on Tracy Takes On, sure. uh, Tracy Ullman's HBO series, which was yeah. probably my favorite job I ever had because Tracy Ullman is just fantastic to work with and so small and so funny um, and just fun to work with. You know, just she was always fun to see every day or whatever. And that I got two more Emmy nominations for that. So that was fun too. Um, and, uh, you know, I've written a whole, bar I did the, another kids show called Writers in the Sky on CBS last season. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I'm giving <laughs> <laughs> And I, 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 I continue to do the occasional acting gig, you know, I guess star here and there. <clears throat> um, yeah. How did the writing for Tracy Takes All differ from Pee Wee? Oh, it was absolutely nothing the same, except for the fact that during the second season of Pee-wee's Playhouse, and also during Big Top Pee-wee, Paul would often leave me to my own devices. You know, oh, just go home and write one. You know, where we didn't have to do everything together. And in Big Top Pee-wee, he took a vacation, and you know, I wrote page thirty to page eighty, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Trace, Tracy, we would meet. She had a really great staff of uh, older writers, and. Uh, we would meet and discuss like, well, what's the thing? Tracy takes on marriage, Tracy takes on drugs, and we would pitch ideas for her various characters. And then we would go off and write them. We didn't all stay in an office anywhere. We just went home and wrote them. And then we would come back together. She would you know, we'd read them out loud, see if we liked it, blah, 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 blah. So that's how that went. Um, so we, we probably met maybe, we started out like with a weekend away in, at a hotel where we all just, stayed together the whole weekend and then i think we would maybe meet twice a week but at least once a week until all the material was put together and i got to play a little character on tracy takes on too that was in a couple of episodes that's fun man that's a good show i remember watching it on hbo yeah she, she's great she's so talented that's amazing george listen man i that's all the questions i got i want to say all thank right. you taking out some time my pleasure it was fun it means a lot to me thank you so much and uh you know we'll chat again soon hopefully I all right and now we're following each other on instagram so i'm in your life that's it man <laughs> you're in the world of media mics get ready oh, we nice lots of good stuff, so all right thank you michael thanks george you have a great day okay nice to meet you too